Hello and welcome to another episode of Interactive Biology TV, where we're making biology fun. My name is Leslie Samuel, and in this episode, episode 58, I'm going to be talking about net hydrostatic pressure and filtration pressure. So let's get right into it. Now we've been looking at the circulatory system, and we've shown that the blood leaves the heart, and then it goes via the aorta, to the arteries, and then to the capillaries, to the venules, to the veins, and then to the vena cava, and then ultimately back to the heart. If you need a review of that, you can always check out episode 54 where we go into more detail about that. Now what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be looking at what happens uh, between the arterioles, the capillaries, and the venules. And that's what we're showing here. You have an artery leaving, leading to the arteriole, and then that goes to the capillary bed, and then that goes via the venules to the vein. And what we're going to look at is what happens specifically right here. The goal here is we want to get blood coming to the tissues, delivering nutrients and so on, oxygen to the tissues, and then taking stuff away. So taking away waste and so on. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to simplify this a little bit. I'm going to show this like this. I'm going to take from the arterioles to the venules. And I'm going to simplify it showing one arteriole that connects to one capillary and then that's going to connect to one venule. Okay, so I'm simplifying this significantly. And here we have the arteriole, here we have the venule, and here we have the capillary. I'm not going to put the C here, but here we have the capillary. The main things that we're going to focus on are the different pressures that we have in this setup. Now, of course, the heart is pumping and the blood is coming in this direction and then it's going via the capillaries. And this is where the exchange happens because this is where we have the tissue and this is where uh, we want to get stuff delivered and we want to pick up stuff to take away from the tissues. So the first thing we're going to talk about is net hydrostatic pressure. And I'm just going to write N H P for net hydrostatic pressure. When we're talking about hydrostatic pressure, we are talking about pressure due to the fluids. And of course, in the blood, we have fluids. In the tissue, we also have fluids. And the net hydrostatic pressure, as the blood is coming in here, of course, there's going to be a blood pressure because the heart is beating, it's pumping the blood. And we've looked at blood pressure in previous episodes. And as the blood goes through the capillaries, it, there's going to be friction that it's encountering. So it's going to be bumping against the walls of the capillaries, and that's going to actually reduce the pressure. So what we're going to end up with is a high amount of pressure here, and that's going to drop down as you go along the capillaries. But not only that. We have tissue here that's filled with fluid also, and that's also going to exert a pressure on the capillaries. So the net hydrostatic pressure, we're talking about the total hydrostatic pressure, that is going to be equal to the blood pressure. Okay, so the blood is pumping out, and we're going to subtract the tissue pressure. So the blood pressure, how much is pumping out, and how much is pushing in from the fluids in the tissues. And that net hydrostatic pressure is going to be greatest going out closer to the arteriole. So we have a lot of hydrostatic pressure pushing out. And as you go down and the blood is bumping against the walls and so on, that amount of pressure is going to decrease and this is what I'm illustrating here it's going down going down and 
when you reach to the end, you're going to have the least amount of hydrostatic pressure, which makes sense. As I said before, the blood is coming via the arteries to the arterioles, and it's coming because the heart is pumping it. And with that pumping, you're going to get a lot of pressure, and that's going to be highest here. But because this tube is so small, you have a tiny tube, uh, almost to the point that the blood cells can only get through one at a time, that is going to cause a lot of friction and that's going to decrease the amount of pressure. If I take something and I push it across a surface, because there's going to be friction with that surface, it's going to slow down. And that's exactly what we're getting here. The amount of pressure is going to decrease as you go away from the arterioles and towards the venules. So the net hydrostatic pressure is what we're looking at here. Now, we're going to get stuff leaving, but not everything can leave. Blood cells aren't going to leave, but water is small enough to get through the pores in the capillaries. So water is going to leave. It's going to take some oxygen with it. It's going to take nutrients with it and so on. And that is going to leave the capillaries, which is exactly what we want because we want to deliver that stuff to the tissues or to the muscles or to whatever it is this capillary is going through. So this is a good thing. But as the water is leaving, of course, you're going to get less and less water inside the capillaries. And because of that, you're going to have a change in osmotic pressure. Now, if you remember, osmosis is the movement of water across a selectively permeable membrane. And we have a selectively permeable membrane here. So what's going to happen is water leaves here. There's going to be a little bit of osmotic pressure for water to come back in. As more water leaves, you're going to get an increase in osmotic pressure. And then you're going to get an even greater increase in osmotic pressure. And that's going to continue, of course. And this is exactly what we're going to see. So as the net hydrostatic pressure goes down, the osmotic pressure, the net osmotic pressure is going to increase and increase and increase. And when we take these together, we're going to get the filtration pressure. I'm going to write F, P, and that's going to be equal to net hydrostatic pressure minus net osmotic pressure. Now these aren't the official symbols. This is just what I'm writing for simplification. But you can see that we're going to get a filtration pressure. And if we're over here and we're taking this hydrostatic pressure minus this osmotic pressure, you're going to see that we're going to have a net filtration pressure moving stuff out. And that's going to decrease as we go here to where the in the center, the filtration pressure is going to be zero because you have this amount coming out and this amount going in. And just to make that more equal, I'm just going to draw the rest of that arrow here. And then, of course, as you go down here, you have more pressure going in. The osmotic pressure is significantly greater. So you're going to get a filtration pressure that's pointing into the capillaries, moving stuff in. So over here, we're moving stuff out. Over here, we're moving stuff in. And if I were to draw a graph, I'm just going to draw a graph over this. And I'm not sure why I did that as a dotted line. Um, this is the y-axis, and we're dealing with filtration pressure. And let's say this is the zero line. What we're going to have is a filtration pressure that looks something like this. Here we have uh, it moving out. So it's going to be somewhere around here. And of course, that's going to go down to zero at this point and then continue going down, showing that we have a negative filtration pressure or in other words, a pressure moving stuff into the capillaries. Here it's moving out of, and here we're moving stuff into. This point right here, where we have a filtration pressure of zero, that is called the dynamic center. 
Okay, so this is where the net hydrostatic pressure is equal to the net osmotic pressure, equal but opposite, of course, and that is called the dynamic center. And in a perfect world, this dynamic center is exactly where we want it to be so that we have a good amount of distance for stuff to leave and a good amount of distance for stuff to come in. So we're delivering the nutrients and the stuff that we need to the tissue, and we're taking away the waste and the stuff that we don't want, sending that away from the tissues. Now I want to look at a different scenario where we have the same setup. We have the arterial the capillaries and the venule going back to the veins and vena cava back to the heart. But in this situation, we're going to be dealing with someone that has high blood pressure. So here, uh, we're going to have a significant amount of net hydrostatic pressure pushing stuff out. So it's much higher and what that's going to do as you can see here, is the pressures are going to be greater all the way along. Yes, it's decreasing, but because we're starting with a higher amount, we're also going to end with a higher amount. Okay, now, we also have the osmotic pressure doing the same thing that it was doing before. And stuff is leaving. And let's say um, we have it here, and this is kind of extreme. And let's say that because of this high blood pressure, we still have the filtration pressure here, we have the osmotic pressure here, but the dynamic center, instead of being over in the center, the dynamic center is somewhere around here. Now, that is a significant problem because this is what you have. In this entire section, we have fluid leaving, and it's not until here that we have a net amount of fluid coming in. And what that's going to do is it's going to cause more fluid to be leaving than the amount of fluid that's coming in, and that is going to result in accumulation of fluid in the tissues, or we can also call that edema. So this can be a result of high blood pressure because we have more fluid leaving the capillaries than coming into the capillaries. We have more going towards the tissues and that can cause a significant amount of problems resulting in edema. So the take home message, net hydrostatic pressure is blood pressure minus tissue pressure. That's what we're showing here. And if we want to find the filtration pressure, we take net hydrostatic pressure minus net osmotic pressure and that will give us that filtration pressure. To this side of the dynamic center, the filtration pressure is moving fluids and dissolved molecules out of the capillaries, and as we come to this side, it's moving fluids into the capillaries. If we have high blood pressure, that can shift the dynamic center significantly, resulting in accumulation of the fluids in the tissues or edema. That is pretty much it for this episode. As usual, I would like to invite you to visit the website at interactive-biology.com for more biology videos and other resources. That's it for this video, and I'll see you in the next one.